Hello, this is uh, Doug Hunter with BTU Metals. I'm the VP Corporate uh, VP uh, Exploration and uh, Qualified Person uh, on on the Red Lake project. Which and I have here with Alan King with me, and uh, he is. I'm a geologist. He's a geophysicist, and we're just uh, looking at trying to understand the results of the recent uh, exploration work and analysis of data, um, particularly geophysical data. And I wondered, uh, Alan, if I could get some thoughts from you on what you've seen so far. Yeah, sure. Yeah, my name's Alan King, and I'm a consulting geophysicist. And uh, I was engaged by by BTU to look at the uh, the, the property and regional scale geophysics. And there was a there was a, a fairly detailed survey and interpretation flown over the BTU property a few years ago. I think in 2012. But then um, in 2016, the uh, the Ontario Geological Survey flew a large survey over the uh, over over the whole area, and it included um, both the uh, covered both the Great Bear and the BTU property. So it gave us an opportunity to look at at some high quality new data that covered both the properties. So I, we, those grids are publicly available, and we downloaded them. And uh, when we plotted it up, we could clearly see the structure that the Great Bear has on their property, which they've been referring to as this. Uh, uh, D2 fold event, which they think is uh, a controlling factor, and it's pretty clear in the mag data that uh, that their high grade gold discovery zone is is hosted in a major structure that cuts through the nose of the fold. Um, and then, if you look at the data, and it's shown in the, the the recent press release, you can see pretty clearly that there's a very similar structure about 2,000 meters to the south. And parallel that that is largely on the BTU zone. So um, once we saw that, we thought we we thought that was pretty interesting. And it's also it's interesting to note too that that immediately brings to mind the situation at Red Lake, where the 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 high grade gold deposits in the Red Lake mines are controlled by two some parallel shear zones that go through the nose of a of an F2 D2 fold event there too. So it's a, it's a good story, and um, there. I think there's potential uh, in in that you know particular zone, but there's if you look at the mag in more detail, there are a couple. There's another large scale structure and a number of smaller ones which could be of interest as well. So, oh, Alan, uh, you, you're drawing an analogy between this piece of greenstone, Dixie, uh, which is a Dixie belt, which is about 20 kilometers to the south of the main camp, but it looks like this may have the same structural controls from the main camp down to this. This new area, and we know that because the guys who are experts in the camp, really the Great Bear guys, they really believe that. So we're we have a pretty good story that way uh, in terms of understanding the deformation history. Is that correct, then? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and it looks like that. it's interesting that you know there was a, a ge good geological story there, uh, good results from Great Bear, and there was they've got they were using the uh, Aeromag survey that they had over their own property. Uh, to help with their work, and they were presenting it in their in their press releases. And then uh, there was a separate survey um, over the BTU ground, but this new um, Ontario Geological Survey data covers the area and allows us to directly compare uh, um, the inf information, same kind of information o on um, on both the properties. So it was really nice to have that data available uh, to be able to make the the comparison in, in a single data set. Yeah, no, that's awesome that that survey was available. Uh a couple of what was released in 17, I think. Yeah, it was, uh, 2016. Uh, it was the date on it, but probably, okay. probably. But, you know that area. I having looked at the geology, what I've seen, it's a really structurally complex area. Um, right. Uh, you know that the Dixie Belt itself, and it's not well exposed. So, and uh, really has been had very little exploration on the on the BTU side. Amazingly little exploration to date. So that's what's particularly exciting. Yeah, and I think the, the the new geophysical surveys add a lot because, as Doug says, there's so little outcrop in this area. Uh, he, he, the, there's been some very good geological mapping done there, and as soon as you drop the um, the, the detailed mag surface on that, you can see how it fits the, the what's known about the geology, and it adds a lot more detail. Yeah, well, we're going to continue to work on that. We've we've got to work on the uh, the results of the airborne uh, modeling of the uh, the anomaly picks and. And then we're going to have incorporate a bit more geologic knowledge too to try to come up with a better uh, a plan for our, our ground surveying, which we're going to start in March.